Hey guys, in this section we're going to talk about jQuery and how to implement it, how to manipulate certain elements in the DOM, um, we'll talk about events, um, and a couple other things. So what, the first thing we need to do is go to jQuery.com and we want to download jQuery. All right. Well, first let me create a, a folder for us to work in. So this is chapter two, section six. All right, so I'm going to just click on the giant download jQuery button. And we can, we can download uh, either jQuery one or two. Um, I'm, I've been sticking with one, so I'm gonna download, um, we can download the compressed version or the uncompressed version for development. Um, basically what this means is compressed is, is the codes all squished together there's no comments um, it's it's basically unreadable while the uncompressed version was is well commented and you can actually kind of read it a little um, we don't need to read it so we're just going to get the compressed version which is this which just looks like a bunch of gibberish um, but we're gonna copy all this and in our folder, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call it jQuery.js, and open that up, and just paste in all that code, and save it. And then we can close that, and we never have to look at it again. So now we want to, what we want to do is create our HTML file. All right, so let's open that up. And I'm gonna open it with Notepad, paste in some HTML. So now what we need to do is we need to include our jQuery file. So we can do that in the head if we open up a script tag and let's say type is text slash JavaScript and source is going to point to our file which is jQuery.js and it's in the same folder so we don't have to specify any type of folder or anything like that. Alright so now jQuery is included so we can use it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a heading an h1 heading and under that I'm gonna open up some script tags and when you're using jQuery it is JavaScript so it has to be in script tags unless it's in an external file now to grab an object um, from the from the DOM we need to use the jQuery object which is a dollar sign followed by some parentheses and in here is where we want to put whatever it is we want to grab or select. In this case, in this case, it's H1. Now this is going to grab all the H1 tags in the document because we haven't specified a class or an ID. Um, in this case, it's okay. Now once we have that object, we can do we can manipulate it and do a lot of different things. Um, we can we can add events, effects. Um, one of the methods that we can use that's pretty simple that I can show you is the add class method. All right, so as you can imagine, all that does is adds a class. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna add a class called red. All right, and I'm gonna actually put some style tags up here. And I'm gonna give it a class called red. And that is going to just, we're going to say color red. So it's just going to turn whatever text it is red. So if we save that and we reload, I'm sorry, I don't think that's the right file. Um, not sure what's going on here. Style. Oh, I'm sorry. I ended. We have to have a, a, a closing script tag here. I always forget to do that. All right. So now, if I reload, 
this heading has a style if we look at it through the developer tools we can see h1 class red now that's not here we're not we're not doing that we're not assigning that class through HTML we're doing it through jQuery so that's how you select an object now it isn't really optimal to have your jQuery and your script tags right in the body of your document so if we take these if we cut this out and we put it up here and you always want to make sure that you're including jQuery first before you use any jQuery so we'll paste that here in the head now if I save this and reload you can see that it's lost its class so the jQuery is not being used or called and the reason that is is because we're calling it before we actually load the h1 now if you've dealt with uh, if you're a web developer and you've seen uh, jQuery in the head then you've probably seen the document the document ready syntax so what we need to do is say jQuery document dot ready alright so and in the ready method we want to say function so we're just opening up a self calling function here it doesn't have a name it's just gonna, gonna run we want to end that with a semicolon now this is where we want to put in all of our jQuery right in between the um, parentheses so if we save that and we reload now it's back we have the class is now equal to red so just remember this syntax um, if possible make it a snippet in your editor just so you can just paste it right in because if you don't have this and you have your script tags before what you're actually taking and, and manipulating and it's not going to work so let's do something else besides add a class let's um, let's take this h1 and let's change the content with the dot html method so now let's say this this heading is from jQuery so if we save that reload this heading is from jQuery so the dot HTML method or action uh, whatever you want to call it is it works like inner HTML in JavaScript which we've used in the past sections it just changes the content in those tags now if I create another h1 We'll say here is another heading and save that and we reload we also get this heading is from jQuery because here we are grabbing all of the h1 tags in the document now if we want to single out one of these we can add let's say add a class of my class so if we want to only change this one we can go back to this selector or this uh, element and just say dot my, cl oh, my class so now it's only gonna grab the h1 tag with my class so if we save that and reload you can see that the one without the class is back to its original text so let's look at some events if we go to our browser let's just go to jQuery.com I'm just gonna type in jQuery events I'm not sure the exact URL uh, api.jquery.com slash category slash events and there's just loads of events we have a lot of the events that we've seen with standard JavaScript we have blur click change uh, and then we have double click um, different kind of different kinds of um, position type of events um, the most position relative to the le left edge to the top edge um, let's see we have our focus and blur we've seen those um, focus in focus out hover 
uh, just loads of events that we can use for different kinds of animations and, and manipulations. So let's use something simple. Let's just use the click event. And if we click on click, we can see uh, it gives us the syntax, it gives us the definition, and also shows us some examples. So all we need is the selector or whatever the whatever we're uh, targeting, and do dot click, and then inside that we want to open up a, a function, a self-calling function, and then in that function is what we want to do when it's clicked. So so what I'm going to do here is just clear everything out. I'm going to leave the document dot ready. And what I want to do is create a button. Um, and the button will say change text. And then below that, I'm going to create an H1 that says this is the text to change. Okay, so if we save that and take a look, we just have a button and then we have some text in H1. So what I want to do is make it so that when we click this, we can actually change this text. So what we need to do is we want to grab the button using the jQuery object. So we'll say button. And remember, this is going to grab all the buttons on the page because we didn't specify a class or an ID. So we'll say button.click. And then in these parentheses, we want to start a function. All right, so when this button is clicked, what do we want to do? We want to take the H1 and we want to change the content and we can do that with .html like we just did and then in that HTML whoop, we can say here is some new text alright so very simple couple lines of code um, save that and reload and if we click this it changes here is some new text now we can also use effects. So if we go to, I'm just going to type in jQuery effects. So here are just a bunch of different animations and effects that we can use fade in, fade out, um, how we can hide and show, slide up and slide down. Let's, let's use that. So we have this, uh, we're going to do the same thing except we're going to change what happens when we click the button. Instead of changing the text, let's do slide up. And that takes a parameter of how f of the speed. You can use keywords like slow, fast, or you can use numbers. And I believe it's milliseconds uh, or something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, 200 is a good speed though. So we save that and we go and reload and we click the button it slides up now it doesn't slide back down because we haven't specified that if we want to do that we can use slide toggle so if we change this here to slide toggle let's reload and we can have it go up and down so you can see um, this is this is the the building block for those great sliders and, and um, slideshows and tabs that you see um, on different websites. And we can also do what's called chaining. We can just keep chaining different things. So let's say uh, .html, we'll change this again, we'll say change text. So we're just chaining on here, we're, we're taking the h1 tag we're changing the HTML and we're, then we're uh, toggling the slide. So let's save that. And you can see it changed and it's slide toggling. So there's just a, a lot of different things. I'd really suggest that you go to api.jquery.com and just check out all the different effects and events 
and uh, manipulation. Uh, it's really helpful. There's a lot of great documentation. So that's it for now. And in the next section, we're going to be um, we're going to do our project, which will include pretty much everything we've gone through in this chapter. We'll include um, JavaScript for form validation, and we'll also use some jQuery effects. So I will see you in that section.